few days before Christmas, an elderly man living in Phoenix called his son, who lived in New York. And he said to his son, I hate to ruin your day, but I have to tell you, your mother and I are getting a divorce. 45 years of misery is long enough. We are so sick of each other, and so we're going to get a divorce, and I want you to call your sister in Chicago and let her know. Well, frantic, the son called his sister who lived in Chicago, and she exploded over the phone. They can't get a divorce. She shouted, don't worry, I'll take care of this. So she called Phoenix immediately, and she got her father on the phone, and she said, you are not getting a divorce. Don't do a single thing until I get there. I am calling my brother back, and we'll both be there tomorrow. Until then, don't do anything. Do you hear me? Well, the man hung up the phone and he turned to his wife and he said, honey, good news. The kids are coming for Christmas <laughs> and they're even paying their own way. <laughs> how many of you were with family for Christmas? And how about Thanksgiving? Yeah, most of us. Yeah, we were too. Um, you know, the holiday season is probably the one time when many families get together and they spend time together. And you know, I think that's the way that it should be because holiday time really is family time. According to a Good Housekeeping article last October, at least 28 major real retailers were closed on Thanksgiving Day. And the Huffington Post listed 27 that were closed on Christmas Day, and would you believe that included Walmart? Almost all of them said that the reason they were doing this was so that their employees could spend time with their families during the holidays. And good for them for doing the right thing, because Thanksgiving and Christmas should be spent with families. They are the two days out of the year when we should really be with the people that we care the most about. But you know, what constitutes a family these days? Well, it probably wouldn't surprise you any to know that the definition of family has really changed over the last 50 years. No longer is a family restricted to a husband and a wife and 2.5 kids. A family can be just about anything. It can be any of, of a number of different combinations of people, from the married to the unmarried, those with and without children, same gender as well as opposite gender couples, and even blended families where you have multiple parents and grandparents who are involved. Apparently, according to the Pew study of, of um, I lost my place. Apparently, decades of demographic and economic and social change have transformed the, the American family that we know of today. And I, for one, think that's a good thing because we all want and we all need to be a part of a family, whatever that family is made up to be. We want and need to be with people that we can turn to during difficult times. We want and need to be, to know that there's a place where no matter what, we belong. And you know, that's part of what our scripture from the book of Hebrews tells us today. Although the King James Version attributes this particular letter to the Apostle Paul, biblical scholars ever since the Reformation have argued that it probably was written by someone else. More likely, it was written by one of his followers or one of his students. In fact, some believe that it may have even been written by Priscilla, who was a, a woman of Jewish heritage and who, along with her husband, Aquila, promoted the Jesus movement all throughout the Gentile world. But regardless of who wrote the letter to the Hebrews, we find that it is filled with references to the Hebrew Bible, pointing toward Jesus as the fulfillment of ancient prophecy. 
And in the passage that we heard today, the author quotes Jesus quoting Psalm 22, where he says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you in the very center of the congregation. Here, the author of the letter to the Hebrews makes it clear that as far as Jesus is concerned, we are all brothers and sisters with God as our heavenly parent. In other words, we are all part of the family of God, regardless of who we are or how we may look. As believers in Christ, we are united into one family. We are brothers and sisters together, all children of God. And as family, we are expected to treat one another in a certain way, right? We are to love one another and be kind toward one another. We are to treat each other with dignity and respect. Because, as Jesus said in the parable of the sheep and the goats, I assure you that when you have done it, to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you have done it for me. Sadly, it doesn't always work that way in families, does it? Some families are torn apart by anger and by strife. Others are dysfunctional and don't always treat each other the way that God intends for us to treat one another. I know. I was part of a dysfunctional family. And from time to time, I witnessed dysfunctional families and the damage that they can cause to other family members and even their friends. I also see tr people treat other human beings with condescension and contempt like they are somehow subhuman. But our scriptures make it very clear. The golden rule makes it very clear. We are called to be loving and kind and helpful. We are called to treat others with dignity and respect. We are meant to be brothers and sisters who get along, not brothers and sisters who are at each other's throats. Now, I know there are times when our emotions get the better of us, and we fly off the handle, and the people that we love the most are the ones that are in the crossfire. And I also know that there are times when we see someone living on the street, and we ask ourselves, why can't that person just get a job? <clears throat> and when that happens, we must ask for forgiveness. And we also must be willing to forgive, depending on which side of the offense we are on. We cannot allow our feelings get the best of us. But when they do, we must ask for forgiveness and be willing to forgive. Because as God's precious children, we are all a product of God's love. And we are united by that love into the family of God. Now, that's not to say that we don't have our differences. But when we treat one another with love instead of hate, when we treat one another with respect instead of disdain, when we offer helping hands instead of diverted eyes, the walls that divide us will completely crumble away. When we acknowledge that even the least of these, our brothers and our sisters, are along with us a part of the family of God, then their lives will be changed, and so will ours. Reverend Dr. Fred Craddock, who is perhaps one of the greatest preachers of our time, tells a story of how he and his wife were on vacation once in the Smoky Mountains near Tennessee. As they were enjoying a quiet meal at an out-of-the-way local diner, an elderly gentleman approached their table 
Good evening, the old man said. You folks here on vacation? Yes, Dr. Craddock hesitantly replied, not really wanting to engage in a conversation with a stranger. So what do you do for a living? The old man asked. I'm a Christian minister, Dr. Craddock replied. A minister, the old man said. Well, now, I owe a great deal to a minister of the Christian church. When I, I grew up not far from these mountains, my mother wasn't married when I was born, and the whole town knew it. I was what most would have called an illegitimate child, which in those days was shameful, and I was ashamed. When I went into town with my mama, I could see people staring at me, trying to guess who my father was. At school, the children said ugly things to me, so I kept to myself during recess, and I often ate my lunch alone. In my early teens, I began attending a little church back in the mountains. It had a minister who was both good-looking and frightening. He had a chiseled face and a heavy beard and a very deep voice. I went to hear him preach, although I don't know exactly why, except that it did something for me. But I was afraid I wasn't welcome in that church because I was, you know, illegitimate. So I would go just in time to hear the sermon, and when it was over, I would leave because I was afraid someone would say, what's a boy like you doing in a church? Well, one day, some people blocked the aisle, and I couldn't get out in front of everybody else. So I made my way down the aisle, and before I could get out of the church, I felt a heavy hand on my shoulder. It was that preacher, and I trembled with fear. He turned his face around and stared right into mine, and I knew what he was doing. He was going to try to guess who my father was. Whose boy are you, the minister asked. But before I could answer, his harsh face broke into a broad smile. Don't tell me, he said. Boy, you are a child of God. I see the resemblance. Then he swatted me on the backside, and he said, Now, go and claim your inheritance. The old man continued by saying, I left that building a totally different person. In fact, that was really the beginning of my life. Well, Dr. Craddock was so moved by this man's story that he had to ask the man his name. Ben, the old man answered. My name is Ben Hooper. And as it turns out, he was the same Ben Hooper who was elected not once, but twice by the people of Tennessee to be governor of that great state. We all want to belong. We all want to be part of the family. And thankfully, through Jesus Christ, we are all part of the family of God because every human being is a part of the family of God. And yes, as family, we are expected to treat one another with kindness and love, with dignity and respect. And when we fail to do these things, we must ask for forgiveness and be willing to forgive. Because being part of a family does more for us than we will ever understand. Being part of a family transforms our lives. We are a family with God as our loving parent and Jesus as our brother. And I, for one, thank God for all of my brothers and sisters that are here as well as those who are not here today. May we always remember how important family is. And may we always celebrate our families every single day of the year. Amen.